Hey everybody, it's Elliot from Little Pump Mule and today I'm here with Doug Bradley. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't know that I'm as excited as you are, <laughs> but I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. We'll tear your soul apart. How do you feel about life right now at this very moment? Life is a bowl of cherries. Um, uh, how do I, well, how do I, what? How do I feel about it at this very moment? Um, it feels like the end of a long weekend. Um, you know, when life should not feel like the end of a long weekend. Life feels like I need a cold beer and something to eat. That's what's up. What would your, what would your own vision of hell look like? Wow. Hell is other people. Jean Paul Sartre said, being locked in a room with the same people for the rest of eternity. <laughs> Which is a bit like doing a convention, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't mean it. Anyway, um, I, I think uh, my vision of hell would consist of being forced to watch Manchester United 24 hours a day for the rest of eternity. I think my vision of hell would be just my dad doing my hair for the rest of Oh, he does your hair? Yeah, constantly. Oh, and, and what a very good job he does of it, let me say. Thank you so much. Do you think he could do my hair too? <laughs> he does his hair all the time. Ah. What are some of your favorite metal bands? And what bands do you think Pinhead would like? I don't have favorite metal bands. I don't like heavy metal. I listen to a huge range of music. Same here. And I always have done. Uh, you know, it's 50 years worth. I don't really do metal. There is a band that I am a huge fan of, um, but it's very controversial, I gather, to call them a, a heavy metal band, uh, because I know a lot of people in the heavy metal community get upset if, if they're referred to as a heavy metal band. I like them because I don't think they are a heavy metal band. That's Ghost. I'm I love them. I'm a huge them. fan of those. I think they're brilliant. Yeah. Pinhead? Um, Pinhead does not listen to bands. <laughs> Pinhead listens to Requiem Masses. <laughs> That's fine with me. Yeah, I interviewed Ghost twice. You did? Yes. Papa? It was Papa behind the mask. Of course. Yeah, he was so cool. cool. Yeah. That's oh, very cool. Oh, yeah, I got signed records from him too. If you could fix one thing on this planet, what would you fix? Oh, God. These are some questions. If I could fix one thing on this planet, what would I fix? Um, yes, I'd do away with rapping. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean rappers. I might do that as well, but, you know, rapping with a W. All the shit that means, you know, when you want to open a bottle of this or a packet of that. It, it takes another five minutes out of your life yeah. trying to get the damn things open and, you know, little little sachets of shit tear here. And eventually when you put enough foot, you know, ketchup goes everywhere. <laughs> so packaging in general. Uh, the, the planet would be grateful for that fix too, I think. But it would also lose, use less uh, plastic or whatever. Exactly, single-use plastic, all that crap that makes the journey from, including plastic bags, that makes the journey from the supermarket shelf to your car, to your kitchen, and then all goes in the trash. What a waste. It so is. serves no purpose. What would you do if you woke up in the middle of the night and was surrounded by Cenobites? I'd say, hi guys, what's up? <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Show no fear. What is your biggest fear in life? Uh, wasps. Um, the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and getting old. Don't let anybody convince you that getting old is good. It isn't. It sucks. <laughs> Everything about it sucks. I'm not particularly afraid of dying. I don't want to die. I would like to stick around and 
watch the carnival proceed for as long as possible. Um, but that I don't appear to have a choice in that. It's the getting old thing. I, I don't want to lose my faculties. I don't want to become physically incapable. And I don't want to become a, a basket case before my time comes, you know. If, I, I'd like to go out with everything still functioning, you know what I mean? It's an awesome goal. But not just yet. And my mom hates wasps. Wasps also. She absolutely well, hates wasps. Well, you know, wasps, wasps they're... I don't know. I mean, people tell me they serve a purpose. I'm damned if I can see it. They, all they do is, you know, when summer comes along and you want to go outside and eat, along come the wasps to disrupt it all. They're, they're like, they're flying hypodermics, it seems to me. And they're, and they're also like sharks. You know, notice they fly like sharks swim when they come at you like that. You know what I mean? Um, and if, you know, all these beautiful animals that we are told are disappearing from the planet, why, planet, why the fuck not wasps? <laughs> I mean, if, if, you, if you were told that wasps were in danger of extinction, would you care? <laughs> <laughs> once, no I, once I saw a, a wasp eat a dragonfly's like, oh. head on the ground, it was Yeah, I, I saw a wasp uh, killing a butterfly. Once. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're horrible. They're like they're bullies. They're, they're bully they are. bugs. That's what they are. Do you want to reveal anything about yourself that fans would never guess about you? Well, no, by de definition. <laughs> because if I wanted to reveal that, they'd already know. There you go. When and where do you feel the most at home and at peace with yourself? Um, at home with my wife and my dog. That's good. That's a good answer. When I feel most at peace, I'm on my couch. Yeah. That's all you need. What advice do you give to all the young actors out there looking to succeed? Oh, this is not an easy answer. Um, you will very often hear actors, particularly of my age, say, don't. Um, and they say that for good reasons, because it is a, a harsh and unforgiving profession it's it god knows it's it's bad enough for actors it's it's worse for actresses by multiplications what i always say is question your motives if your motives have anything to do with money and fame stop right there um, and go and do something else because uh, you'll make more money you know doing any job um, and you'll, you know, can you live without having uh, um, a pay packet hit your bank account every month? Can you live with when you work, not knowing when you're going to work again, if you're going to work again? Um, and if you if you want to be famous, go and go and read the weather on your local TV station because that'll that'll work, that'll be guaranteed, you know. Um, the uh, the statistics we all know and they're they they are unforgiving. It, you know, ninety ninety five percent of the membership of the Screen Actors Guild of America is unemployed at any given moment. Around the same percentage of membership of the Screen Actors Guild earn less than ten thousand dollars a year from acting. People have a notion that anybody who's been connected with a movie in any way earns telephone numbers you know? so I I say all of that to people and you know you may have had fun doing this in high school or whatever do you think you can still do this on a wet Tuesday in February um, when you know your your wife has just left you and you're hungover and 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 it's the last thing in the world when they say action, can you still do it? Um, and if, if there is anything else you would rather do, or you think you might like to do, do that. But if you know deep down that there's nothing else you'd rather do, or as in my case, nothing else you're any good at, it, then follow the dream. Because... Um, 
the end of the day, following the dream is the important bit. What's your favorite part about doing these hard conventions? Oh, well, there's many things. Um, it's not often as an actor that you get to meet the people who watch what you do. Uh, the people who ultimately pay the wages, the people who ultimately keep the movie industry going, because if they don't go and see the movies and buy the DVDs, then it's not going to happen. Um, and they are the most extraordinarily um, knowledgeable and loyal fan base. I get to meet friends, and I get to meet my peer group and other actors. I get to meet heroes. Um, uh, you know, and we all have a good time and make some money. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'm, no, not unless you have anything else you need to know. I'm, you know. Awesome. Good. Thank you so much. You know, and you tell me you're 14? Yes. Well, you're a remarkable individual. Thank you so much. How long have you been doing this? About like five years. Wow. And you have how many followers? 46,000, like 45,000, 46,000 subscribers on us. So you started doing this when you were nine, what, interviewing? Yeah, about that you, age. You were doing interviews when you were Who were you interviewing when you were nine years old? Ben Wyman uh, from Dillinger Escape Plan. That's a metal band. Sure. And then uh, Nightbirds. Brian okay. from Nightbirds. And Ghost. When you were nine? Yeah. You interviewed Papa when you were nine. I have nothing else to say. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Nice to meet you.